What's up guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're gonna to go over this trippy effect. Make sure you guys subscribe if you like videos like these and also leave a like, that would help me a lot. So here's how the effect looks. All right, so once you're ready, let's go right into After Effects. So once you're in After Effects and you got your clip that you wanna use, I'm gonna use this one right here. So what you wanna do is find out where you want the effect to take place. So for my example, I wanna make it start right here. So what you wanna do is make a cut, just press Shift, Control D. What you wanna do is duplicate this by selecting it and pressing Control D. And now what you wanna double click this and then you're gonna be put into your layer. And then what you wanna do now is find the man right here with the paintbrush and then rotoscope your person out. The basics of rotoscoping is you left click to select something and highlight it and then you want to make sure that everything on the person is highlighted in purple. So just go frame by frame and make sure it looks really good. So once you're finished, make sure you click the freeze button down here and it's going to lock your rotoscope into place. Make sure that you guys do the step properly as it's going to make it look way better. So now what you want to do is go to your rotoscope settings and change the feather. Just turn it up to about 8 or 7 and then make sure you click use motion blur and then decontaminate edge colors. And you can go back to your composition and then solo this one out to see what you have. So you can see mine has some borders leaking so I want to make sure that I change the shift edge inwards a tiny bit. So, so this looks good right here so now you have one clip with only the person and then one clip with the entire background including your subject now you want to go to the bottom layer and then find the turbulent displace effect and drag that on to your clip you can now hide the top layers so you can see what you're doing just go to the beginning of the clip turn down the amount to zero and then keyframe it and go a few frames in and then turn it up to about 120 ish so it's gonna look distorted like this so it's gonna go from normal and look distorted afterwards. Now you want to find the hue saturation onto it and then make sure you guys click colorize and then find a color that you like. I'm gonna use purple for my example. I'm gonna turn the saturation up a little bit so we have more colors. That looks fine. And you can never go wrong with some deep glow. So I'm gonna add that to my clip. If you have a sapphire glow, that's fine as well. Or just normal glow from After Effects. For my example, deep glow looks the best. This is not a free plugin, so you guys have to purchase this. So I'm going to turn the radius down a little bit to about 190 and I think that looks pretty cool. Now what I want to do is duplicate this clip and then make this top one screen and then add some sapphire distort to this one. If you don't know how to make it screen just go to your modes and then click the drop down and find screen. So just drag sapphire distort to your clip and it's going to look like this at the beginning. So you want to turn the blur lens up quite a bit. So I'm going to turn mine up to about 195 and then turn the amount down a tiny bit. And then mess with the rotate warp direction. So I'm gonna have mine at about 65 ish. That looks pretty clean. Now I'm gonna add some deep glow again. So we're gonna have two deep glows on this one. It's gonna make it a little more brighter. And then now you can enable the top cliff to see how it looks. So for some reason, my rotoscope isn't showing on the first frame. So I'm gonna move this one over one frame. So you guys can see it goes from normal and then way too abrupt to the effect. So we have to make a tiny transition here to make it look a lot better. So once you guys have come this far, you can highlight all your layers, right click and pre-compose them. Make sure you click move all attributes into new composition and then click OK. Now what you want to do is add some sapphire glow or deep glow, whatever glow you guys have. Find the point where it cuts and turns into the background with the cool effects and add a keyframe here and then go about three frames backwards, make it zero and then and then go three more frames forward from the cut and then make it zero. So you can see this is how it looks. And now you guys want to add some sapphire shake and then drag that to your composition. And then make sure that you guys go to the cut and then make a keyframe on the amplitude. And I'm going to turn mine to about six and then go a few more frames backwards, turn it down to zero. And now go a few more frames after the cut and then turn it down zero. And now you guys can see as the transition happens, we get a shake, which is what we want. I think this shake is a little bit too harsh. So I'm going to turn down the frequency and down a tiny bit to about six. Let's see how that looks. Okay, that looks better. So now you guys can see we have some borders showing from the shape. You see those black lines right here. So what we need to do is to scale in right as the shake happens. So we'll just make a keyframe on the scale. Turn it up so that we can't see the lines anymore. Go a few more frames backwards. Turn it down to 100. And then do the same on the opposite side. Go a few frames into the effect and then turn it down to 100 again. So this is how it looks right now. 
I forgot to mention that you guys should use motion blur on the shake. Just check for motion blur right here on the shake. So I'm pretty happy with how it looks. I think maybe we can turn up the glow a tiny bit more. So let's turn up the brightness as the cut happens to about, let's say, 3 or 3.5. Let's see how that looks. Okay, that was a little bit too much. Let's turn it down to 3. Okay, 3 looks perfect for this example. And that's pretty much it, guys. This is the final effect. Thanks for making it this far. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you guys click subscribe and also leave a like. It'll help me a lot. And if you guys want to check out my work, make sure you check out Instagram down below. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next video.